the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, has been in the throes of an existential crisis, at least since 2021, when member states failed to agree on a budget. Trust has been further eroded following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. OSCE is currently helmed by the well-educated and articulate Minister of Foreign Affairs of North Macedonia, Buyao Osmani, as its chairman. But the organization is so crippled that it cannot even agree on Osmani's successor in 2024. OSCE membership includes every stakeholder in Europe, including the United States of America, Canada and Russia, one of its founders. Initially, Osmani aimed to navigate this unwieldy group through a period of reflection about its foundational values and purpose. Putin's aggression put paid to that. And now the goals are more modest. Modest, but no less laudable. Exporting North Macedonia's successful model of ethnic coexistence to other problem areas such as Moldova, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Armenia and Azerbaijan. Osmani himself is uniquely qualified to do exactly that. He is a member of the Albanian minority in North Macedonia. He has witnessed the strife between the Albanians and the Macedonians in decades past. Now, pacified, partly due to the efforts of OSCE's historical first mission on the ground, the tiny country of North Macedonia, 1.9 million citizens, has something to offer to the rest of the world. And yet, OSCE's mission does require a substantive overhaul in, its, in at least six areas of functionality, six signature initiatives, or six pillars. Number one, OSCE needs to counter threats to democracy posed by social media algorithms, conspiracy theories, artificial intelligence, deep fakes, and fake news. OSCE, OSCE should build and provide expertise in these areas to member countries. The integrity of elections, as well as the mindset of electorates, are at stake. A population poisoned by misinformation and disinformation is incapable of rational politics. Pillar number two. OSCE needs to highlight, name and shame culprits when it comes to the subversion of human rights. In virtually all its member states, from the United States of America to Russia to Hungary, a trade-off between human rights and other goods has become the norm. People willingly surrender their privileges in order to hark back to traditional values, to feel safer, to guarantee prosperity, or to fend off real and imagined menace. Pillar number three, OSC needs to identify and sound the alarm regarding the incremental or aggressive undermining of freedom of the media and free speech. Market failures in this field, media deserts, should be remedied at the state level. Media entrepreneurship and competition should be encouraged. Media convergence should be allowed only while preserving a plurality of voices. Monopolies, including the high-tech behemoths, which control search engines, LLM chatbots and social media, these monopolies should be dismantled. Pillar number four. Around the globe, there is a virulent backlash against minority rights and protections, against immigrants and against foreigners. Xenophobia colludes with racism and hate speech to erode basic human and institutional solidarity. OSCE should position itself on the front lines of this war. As a consensus-built group which incorporates multiple cultures and societies, OSCE should strive 
to offer an example of tolerance, compromise and acceptance of the other. Pillar number five. OSCE should shift its focus to conflict prevention rather than conflict resolution, with emphasis on the root causes of conflicts, such as debilitating poverty, a lack of education, overpopulation, discrimination against women, and a deteriorating physical and biological environment, replete with increasing scarcity of resources such as arable land and water. Conflict resolution is always way too late and often either unsuccessful or devolves into a drawn-out resource-depleting endeavor, better to prevent conflicts rather than resolve them. And finally, the last pillar, OEC should launch a campaign among its members in an attempt to broaden the definition of terrorism to include domestic terrorism. Most terrorism acts are domestic, not international. And yet the outdated focus is still on the global, transnational variety of terrorism. OSCE's very relevance is at stake. Many of its efforts and programs are replicated by other multinationals. Its contribution to the security of the Northern Hemisphere is far from ascertained in a post-Ukraine world and with NATO evolving from a mere defense treaty into an arbiter of war, peace and human rights. The United Nations maintains peacekeeping operations as well. Interpol and Europol fight international crime, terrorism. You know, so what is OSCE for? What is it good for? How does it differentiate itself? OSCE urgently requires a facelift and some brand differentiation lest it is rendered obsolete and extinct. It, its very consensus-based decision process needs to be redesigned or possibly reconsidered and its decision-making streamlined and revamped. It is a fight for its survival, but to its detriment, OSCE complacently is treating it as if it were a mere budgetary administrative bump in the road, a fatal mistake.